So the force of the belt on the person, this is the only unbalanced external force. I'm sure that the seat is holding her up and the earth is pulling her down, but this one is not balanced. So I know this quantity. This is, that's 16,000 newtons times some unknown delta t. Take a question from the students in the classroom. How are you supposed to look at this and understand this all at once? You are not. This is way too complicated to stare at a blank paper and make any sense of it as a beginning physics student. What you are supposed to do is all of this and more and work through the steps of the problem solving strategy. If you're like, this is a very hard problem. But if you're lucky, you'll get to a point where you can see that what we've got here is an impulse and a force and a delta t. And it's pretty straightforward to solve for this delta t. Oh, I'm getting a little nervous. Because it's, look, why am I getting nervous? Because when I rearrange this, I'm getting I'm getting a negative number for a delta t. That doesn't happen outside of science fiction. So that delta t's got to come out to be positive. Did I make a boo-boo somewhere? Let's uh, let's stop. Let's make a when in doubt. Here's a force diagram for the woman. Force of belt on woman. And look, here's our position axis. That means this has to be a negative force. So this should have been a negative here. This is a negative. And hey, wait, look, it matches up because our impulse bar is negative too, is negative as well. So what we get is positive 0 0.1 seconds. Is that a reasonable number? Is that a reasonable number to be stopped in a car crash safely? No. Oh. Tenth of a second? I mean, it's not all that long, but slowing down from 55 miles an hour? What? Let me tell you this. Um, let's reason. So we have we've answered this problem. If you write, this is a short length of time, but it seems like a say it, it, it seems like the amount of time that a car crash could occur in. Additional thought. Let's have the same crash. If the woman, if the same woman is traveling at the same speed. She's going to have the same initial momentum, right? Um, 16,000, which means in order to stop her safely, when she stops safely, she has to have a momentum of zero, which means the impulse of the seatbelt still has to be negative 1,600. Sorry, negative 16,000. What happen, What has to happen, let's say, let's say, instead of plowing into another car and coming to a stop at a tenth of a second, what if, um, what if we drove into a bridge abutment and stopped in, you know, essentially no time whatsoever, a millisecond? A bridge what? Uh, that's, you know, the concrete side oh, of, a bridge, okay. of an overpass. So what if she stopped in only a millisecond instead of a tenth of a second. What force would be required? To cause to make that change in momentum. Um, 
um, that would be. Oh wait, no, see, do it again. Times because delta p equals f net external times delta t. To solve for this f seatbelt up here would be negative 16,000 divided by 0 0.001, and that is the same as negative 16,000 plus three zeros. And that does not look like a healthy number of nuisances to have exerted upon. No. Yeah. They can die. Yes. 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 Uh, right. That's well in excess. So uh, why do we have airbags? They don't die. Well, in terms of momentum conservation, why is it good? Because you, it gain, it just gains you a little extra time. Um, okay. Let's call that end of question seven for the video.